Hey y'all, it's Nancy from Southern Things. I wanted to share with you a recipe that I'd gotten years ago from my aunt. Um, if you like me, I love coconut. And this is the best coconut cake ever. This is my most requested cake, especially at church or any type of meat and eat things we have. So I want to get started on the coconut cake. And it's first you use Duncan Hines Classic Yellow Cake Mix. And you, you just mix it according to the directions if you want. I have to change everything, so just bear with me on that one. <laughs> but you can follow the directions on the back for the cup of water and the um, oil and the eggs. And instead of using the water, I like to substitute a little bit of coconut milk because I love coconut, so why not add a little more coconut? So let's get this going here. First, you dump your cake mix in your mixer. It calls for the cup of water, like I said. So I'm using a half cup of coconut milk, and I'm gonna add water to that till it gets to one cup. Pour that in. I need a third cup of vegetable oil. that here okay that's third pour that in I just use my um, Crisco vegetable oil but any any oil's fine store brand whatever whatever suits you and at now three eggs get my trash bag in my box okay crack the eggs into our measuring cup so we make sure we don't get any holes or cracked shells I should say not holes in our mix That's two and that's three okay oh you're oh yeah sorry your mixer up and do as it says I think it says to I blend mine first and then beat at medium speed for two minutes so that's what we're gonna do I'm blending it so the powder doesn't fly all over your kitchen and then you got to wipe everything down <laughs> okay uh -huh. just the medium speed there you go. For two minutes. And while we're doing that, with this recipe, you can either do two pans, two nine inch or eight and a half is what I've got here. Um, and cut them in half once they're done. Or I've kind of got a little lazy about doing that. So I do the four pans. So I'm greasing my pan. I just take a little paper towel and get some Crisco on it and wipe it around in my pan. I've already preheated my oven. Said the 325. I have shiny pans here, so I, I go a little less on that. 325, let's get these things greased. That looks good. It's been about a minute. One more minute. Okay, there's my grease. And my little flour. I 
that's enough on the mixing. Let's finish flouring my pans. I always make such a mess doing this, but it's all good, right? It's all good. I get flour powder everywhere. <laughs> One more to go. My shaker's really full and it doesn't like to come out as well. It does better when I've used a little bit of it. Okay, those look pretty good. I'm gonna move this over, get some room there. my beater to make sure sometimes you know how it'll leave just a little bit in the bottom of the mixing bowl there I don't like that so I like to take my beater and run it around in the bottom there for a little bit let's get all this off our beater don't want to waste any of that luscious Duncan Hines cake mix now you can use any type of cake mix that you prefer I'm just seeing, I prefer Duncan Hines. So it's, it's whatever your preference is. Just give it a quick stir. Let's get this back out the way. Got my pans. And you just can divide it between the two pans or the four pans in my case because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to cut them in half. That's just me. I used to do it the other way, but it seems like it was just so messy to uh, cut them. And you got to wait till they're absolutely cool because they will tear up on you. So I'm trying, I'm gonna leave a little bit in there. Let me see how well divided I've got these. I'm going to spread this around in my pan, cover the bottom. These will be thin layers, which is what makes the cake so delicious. I mean, wonderful. If we have anything in our church, this is what everybody wants. And this Sunday is my father-in-law's birthday. Well, it's tomorrow actually, but we're celebrating this Sunday at church because he is our pastor at our local church here. And we're gonna have a little dinner afterwards for him and anyone else that's in our church that has birthdays in the month of October. We have a couple others in the church that have birthdays, Dwight and Ray. Um, so we'll also celebrate their birthday uh, we've had everybody at church fill out a paper so that you know, we know what their favorite dessert is, what their favorite food is. So every month, if we have somebody in that month, we try to have at least have that dessert available for them to eat. Make them feel a little bit special, you know. Getting this all worked in here. I like to make sure it's always to the edge of the pan. I don't like little funky little layers here. Let me see. I got a little bit more. Let's add a little more to this one. I like to get every drop I can out of my bowl. So bear with me. <laughs> A little more in that one, a little more in that one, and scrape it out into this one. Okay, got that one clean. Now let's spread this a little bit out. It doesn't have to be exact. I used to be so silly when it came to this. I would actually measure my batter into each pan so that I had exact layers. 
But as you get older, you learn, you live and you learn that all that's not necessary. Just do your best, put it in the pan, and it will all turn out just fine. Scrape this off into that pan. All right. Get my hands clean again. I got a little batter on them. All right, I've got four pans. Here's all four. You can barely see one, but I do have a fourth one. And I'm gonna put them in the oven. Uh, I'm not sure what to tell you because everybody's oven cooks differently. I have a gas oven, so it cooks a little slower. Um, I, I check mine after about 10 minutes because they are thin. You can see there's not a lot of batter in there. So after about 10 minutes, I start looking. And we'll put these in the oven and then we'll come back and I'll show you the rest of the recipe. Okay, now we've got the cake, mix, cake layers in the oven, four cake layers. And now we're gonna mix up a filling for this coconut cake. I mean, this is what makes the cake, trust me. If you love coconut as much as I do, you're gonna love this. Okay, you're gonna take one and a half cups of sugar. You can do this by hand, so you don't have to do the mixer. And I guess it's a Southern thing, but a full measuring cup. I mean, a full one <laughs> of sour cream. I just use any sour cream that they have fat-free, regular, break stones, daisy, whatever you like. This is what they had at the store. So I put that in with the sugar. It calls for eight ounces. I don't know if I said that, but it calls for eight ounces. So if you just want to put the eight ounces, it's still going to be delicious. Trust me, delicious. But I like a little bit extra filling. And so we'll stir that together. That's my alarm. Alexa, stop. Okay, they're not ready yet. I just, I wasn't sure about the timing on it because I've never actually written down those instructions as far as how long I cook the layers. So I've started with 10 minutes and now we're gonna go with about 10 more. I'll keep checking them though. Cause I don't want them overdone and dried out. That is the secret to your layers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the secret to your la layers is don't overcook them and don't cook them so long till they're brown all around. You just want a light golden brown. Um, so they'll be moist and, and just sort of melt in your mouth. If you cook them to your outside edges are brown, the top is really brown, it's, you just got a dry cake. And again, I don't know if it's a Southern thing or not, but we like moist, good cakes. And then you're gonna take two of the six ounce bird's eye frozen fresh coconut. Just dump that in here. Dump in one now. Now on this, you're supposed to just dump a half of the next one, but of course, that's not what I'm gonna do. I want another whole one, so I use two six ounce. But you can certainly cut it back to one and a half. And you'll understand why they said one and a half in a little bit, but I like more coconut in mine. It makes it thicker and just, I don't know. More is better. Guess that's going to be my motto, huh? More is better. Okay, I've mixed this. You see how cream? That's your filling between those layers. And this will soak into the layers. That's why I make mine ahead of time, at least, if you can, two days ahead of time. 
is great. It gives the filling some time to go down into the soak into your layers. And oh, it is just delicious. So we've got that mixed up. Break my spatula off. And the reason I use this bowl is because, there's my lid, I couldn't find my lid. I put this lid on there, snap it shut, and that goes in the fridge while I'm finishing my layers and your icing. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, now I've got my cake layers out of the oven. They took about 16 minutes to do. That could vary with everybody's oven, so get your tester out, your cake tester out. If you don't have one of these, I don't know if you can see it. It's just a long piece of wire. Some people use a toothpick, and that's fine. But I got the cake tester, and I love it is the best thing. Just stick it in those layers. If it comes out clean, they're ready. They don't have to be brown. These layers did not brown very much. I'll show you one. And they're just a light golden brown, but not very much. But they look really good. So we've got the layers. I'm going to let those cool. And we're going to mix up the icing right now. So for the outside, we're going to use one eight ounce container of Cool Whip. You can use the extra creamy, the regular, what I steer away from the um, light. The light seems to be a little more um, runny. So go with the creamy or the regular. And we're gonna take that and put it in a, another Tupperware measuring cup bowl that I love to mix this stuff in. Just lightly, try not to handle your Cool Whip. The more you handle your Cool Whip, it kind of gets a tough texture about it. I get what's on the lid, because you need it. You need every last drop. Okay, and now, the bird's eye, six ounce, frozen coconut, again. And we're just going to put half. Okay, and I saved the other half. No, I don't have to save it forever. Because I, at the end, I like to take this and sprinkle it around on, on the top for a garnish. It just makes it look real pretty and it's so white and fluffy. It's just beautiful. So just lightly fold this into your Cool Whip. Don't mix it, over mix it. Just lightly get your coconut incorporated into that Cool Whip. All right, now we got to get that cleaned off. Let me get another spatula. All right. Won't lose any of that good cool whip. Okay, we got that. We put the top on that and also put that in the fridge because we got to let our layers cool. This lid doesn't want to fit, does it? Love my Tupperware though, guys. Okay, I, I lay my cool, my cool wheel, my coconut on the top, stick it in the fridge along with the filling. And when the layer's cool, I'll show you how to put it together. All right, hey everybody, we're back. Our layers have cooled. I've got my icing out the, I mean, no, my filling out the refrigerator. And we're gonna, I'm gonna put it in this pretty plate. You like that plate? It looks real Southern, doesn't it? I picked that up at an antique store and I just thought it was so pretty and I love the little edges like that. So I thought I'd use that plate today to put my coconut cake together. First of all, you take your cake layers and you, ooh, 
bad sound. And you run your knife around the edges. Then I take mine and I hit it on the side like that. And when you see it moving, you're good to go. Turn it over. I like to turn it back over. You can flip it upside down, whichever suits you, whatever works. If you like to put your plate on the top and dump it onto that, if there's any loose crumbs around the edges, I like to pick those up if I can. And we'll start putting this cake together. All right, we have our coconut icing here. I'm gonna give it a little stir, to make sure everything's still good and incorporated together. And I think I'm gonna use a spoon today. Let's get a spoon out the door here. All right, and we'll just dip some onto our cake. You can take a fork. Let me get a fork. I'll show you. You can take a fork like this, just a regular dinner fork, and you can lightly poke some holes in your layer and it will penetrate the layers a lot quicker if you're on a tight schedule, which I'm not. So I can do it or not do it, it doesn't matter. So you just generously put your fill in between your layers. Get as much as you can, because you've got a lot. And um, like I said, more is better. Must be a Southern thing, huh? Yes. Y'all can let me know if y'all like more too. It's not just that for us in the South. All right, our next layer, we're gonna run it around the edges. I know y'all don't like that noise, but I'll try to be easy. Okay, our layer is loosened. Turn it out. Place it on top of the other next layer. The last layer you put the filling in between. You can prick it with your fork. Now, put some more filling on top of that. Just whatever you want. Um, I like to put a lot between the layers because that's what I think makes it so good. Just spread that out all over it. Not quite to the edge, maybe a quarter inch, something like that, because it will come out the sides when you get all of them stacked on top of one another, but that's okay. Nobody will never know. Here's my third layer. That one's a little bit warm. I think I'll go with this one. Some of these layers don't even need me to run a knife around them. Okay. Third layer. Okay, nice. Pricking my layers with the fork. You can't go wrong with that. That filling in between is just scrumptious. I hope y'all can see. I've got a little close, don't I? I need to move over. I'm sorry. This is my first video. I'll do better. I promise. Okay, now our last layer. Rub my hands off, so I don't make too much of a mess. Yes, it will slide around on you, but don't let that worry you. Nobody will ever know. And if you've got some filling left over, I know I told you just between the layers, but you can take that little bit that's left, you can eat it. Mm, it's good. That sour cream and sugar and coconut, I never thought I would eat such a thing. But once you try it, you'll find out differently. 
you can put that little bit on the top. Now, if you're new to cake baking, I wouldn't advise you to do this because it makes uh, putting the Cool Whip on a little trickier. But if you're brave, go right ahead and try it. I'm sure you'll do just fine. Smooth that out. You see it coming between my, around the edges. That's all right. Just take it and smooth it back up on it. Delicious, delicious. All right, done with that. Now we're going to go to, let me wipe this up. I don't like cake everywhere. Now let me get my icing out the refrigerator. And we're almost done. Okay. Got my icing and my half bag of delicious frozen coconut. That stuff is wonderful. Can you see the cake? to move you back a little bit so you can see it. Now, can you see it? All right. I hope you can. But anyway, here's your Cool Whip. Just take you a, a wide knife. If you've got the Wilton uh, cake decorating ones, that's fine. Whatever you have on hand, I just use a wide mouth, uh, like a jelly knife. And you start putting that around the edges to seal it. See a little bit of layers here flaking off. It's okay. Just grab them up. Put them aside. This has to be one of the easiest desserts I've ever done. Um, I've got a couple others that I'm going to share with you at some point. But this is a delicious cake. So I wanted to share this one with y'all first to get my channel going and see how y'all like it. Tell me in the comments below. Um, I'll do my best to put the recipe down in the down in bot in the bottom the full recipe so you can try it for yourself I hear a voice okay this is looking good remember guys if you like this first video I appreciate it if you would like it, subscribe, share, ring the little bell, and hopefully I'll have you another video really soon. Uh, it won't be just cooking though, I do warn you about that. I do a lot of cooking, I love to cook, I always have, I used to cook a lot for people for Christmas and sell things. And that's the way I made a lot of my money for Christmas to buy Christmas gifts my daughter was little we had businesses around town that um, I take a price list to and little samples and they'd buy from me for their parties I know that's a little harder right now but maybe we'll all get back to normal soon At least I hope and pray we are. See what I mean about getting a little tricky with you putting the filling on the top of it. I prom promise it will all work out. I like to put a dollop here and a dollop there. And then I tie them together. wants to slide around a little bit but just a light touch and you can cover it honestly you can't go wrong with this cake the messier I believe it tastes even better 
So if you have some layers tear up, don't worry about it. Put them together, put a little bit of the filling in between them, and you're good to go. And I moved it forward again, I'm sorry. I'll get my act together, trust me, at some point. Okay, now just to dress it up a little bit here. It looks like, I don't know, it just looks like a snow on, on this cake. It's so light. Even people that don't uh, really like dessert love this cake. Trust me. My mother-in-law is not a big dessert fan. She doesn't like a lot of sweets, but she loves this cake as well. It was a favorite of my dad's. I really haven't met many people that don't like the cake unless you just don't like coconut. And I know there's some of you out there that don't like coconut. And that's okay. We're going to do some other ones that you will like. I just take my knife, I'm sorry, and just take it and pop it up. It makes some little crests in your cool whip. And it looks so, got a spot there I gotta fix. I'm telling you, cool whip is wonderful for fixing little boo boos on your cake. That's got it. Y'all see this cake? All right, now I'm gonna take my leftover coconut, frozen. You can use the flake coconut if you like. It's perfectly fine. Like I said, you can't make a mistake. I just love the frozen because it is so close to the home grated coconut that your grandma probably used to do. I did it a while. But then when I found this, I thought, why well, go to the Bob? They've already done it for me. It is really good. And like a, it's not sweetened like the flaked. So it doesn't make this outside overly sweet. You'd probably wondering about the inside. It is it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's, it's just a right combination. I tell you, it is a delicious combo. I like to drop a little on the sides if I need to. All of that, let me rinse my hands and I'll show you the finished product. Okay. Now coconut up. Let me get a paper towel and clean up my edges what I do. Like I said, it's no worry. Just just, just go with it. Just run your damp paper towel with your finger around the edge. I got one little hole here. Two little holes, rather. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's run my paper towel back around. All right, we have a coconut cake. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh, it's so good. What y'all think? It's gonna be good. <laughs> and I'm getting a piece of it Sunday. All right, lady, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you could subscribe, I would so appreciate it. I'm just trying to get the channel going at Southern Things with Nancy. So thank y'all for watching. Bye.